Welcome to That's Good Sports. I'm the world's least respected NFL anchor, Brandon Perna. Basically, I'm the Zach Wilson of football talking, and today I've got some key insight as to what went wrong in New York City with the Jets offense. Now, this info is coming by way of The Athletic. This sheds a, a light on Mike LaFleur's biggest failure, developing Zach Wilson. Uh, finding a coach who is both a great play caller and a developer of talent isn't as easy as we think, so we're going to dive in on Let's Good Sports. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel or, or I'll be forced to go to TikTok. Today's episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. I'm gonna be hosting a couple more $10 six-person fantasy leagues for this week's divisional round of football. Those links will be in the description. Once the league fills up, the draft starts. Now, I did four last week and finished in last place, seventh place, third place, second place. So like this show, my drafts are all over the place. Now, if you want to compete for bigger prizes, you can enter the Mitten Returns again, the Gauntlet Returns, or the Battle Royale, or all three. The Gauntlet Returns is offering $500,000 in prizes with 75 k going to first place. All you got to do is click my link below, use my code That's Good, and draft your team before the games start. Again, with my code, Underdog's going to match your first deposit up to a hundred dollar. Hundred dollar! All right, let me start by saying this is not a hit piece, okay? It's not some clickbait bullshit. I'm not trying to throw Zach Wilson under the bus, nor am I trying to throw Mike LaFleur under it. To be quite honest, being under the bus would be an honor for any real NFL fan. What I want to attempt to do is explain why this did not work outside of the fact that Zach Wilson was horrible. Explain how Zach Wilson lost the locker room when heading into training camp Based on some MILF hunting rumors, Zach had teammates showing up wearing Zach Wilson Times Person of the Year shirts. Well, it turns out, possibly performing coitus with women over the age of 40 does not make you better at quarterback. Why do you think Tom Brady got a divorce this year? While there was drama in New York, I think most of it is pretty inconsequential. I want to focus, though, on how if your head coach is a defensive guy, you better have a veteran QB or the most well-rounded OC to work with a rookie. Of the eight remaining playoff teams, 49ers, Eagles, Cowboys, Giants, Chiefs, Bills, Bengals, Jaguars, only one team has a defensive head coach in the Bills with Sean McDermott. And his offensive coordinator, Brian Dable, was the mastermind play caller who developed Josh Allen and molded the Bills into who they are as an offensive identity. And now he has the Giants in the mix with Dan Jones. Dable and Allen, that was a perfect fit. Just 370 miles away though in New York City, the Jets thought they had the same thing with Sala, LaFleur, and Zachy Wilson. Now the New York Jets were a football team in 2022 that had they paired the right quarterback and offensive coordinator together, would have been in the playoffs competing. Their defense was pretty incredible. They allowed just 18.6 points per game, fourth best in the league despite getting no help from their offense. Unless you're a total submissive, that kind of one-way relationship is hard to maintain. Rookie Sauce Gardner was a slam dunk draft pick leading the charge on a passing defense that only allowed 189.4 yards per game, third best on earth. Sauce is currently the odds on favorite to win defensive rookie of the year and it's not really even close. On offense, Garrett Wilson emerged as a very promising rookie ball catcher, and running back Brees Hall was on a pace most likely to win NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year uh, before going down with an ACL injury against the Broncos. Yet the Jets switched quarterbacks several times throughout the season due to both injury and poor play, and their offense was fourth worst with the disgusting 17.4 points per game. Now, thanks to a great article by Zach Rosenblatt on The Athletic, we know that the Mike LaFleur and Zach Wilson pairing was like red wine and cat shit. 
And I swear to God, if any of you say that's actually a delicious pairing in the comments, I'm gonna block you. I'm gonna block you. Now we frequently say this about rookie QBs, right? A quarterback needs to go to the right situation with the right fit to truly succeed in the NFL. We say that because not every quarterback out there is Patrick Mahomes. And damn it, even Patrick Mahomes went to the absolute best place to cultivate his insane athletic skill set. Hell, he had the luxury to learn behind Alex Smith for an entire season. Zach Wilson was thrown into the fire, which is expected when you're the second overall draft pick. The problem, I believe, is Wilson was the least ready to be thrown into that fire. What's clear now is that Mike LaFleur and Zach Wilson those two were like oil and water, and their inability to mix was really not either one's fault. A pairing that should have worked, but didn't. And I will say, I think if Justin Fields uh, would have been drafted by the Jets, he would have been the right fit with Lafleur's offense. I think Fields playing at Ohio State, where fans and media uh, are in the same ballpark in terms of scrutiny and intensity, prepared him to handle the pressures of the NFL and to use that pressure to develop after a horrible rookie outing. So my big concern for Zach Wilson when he was coming out of BYU and specifically going to New York was how he would handle that hellscape of a media uh, circus. He's tried to say the right things, but will ultimately be remembered for saying the, the wrong thing that one time. Do you, do you feel like you let the defense down at all? No. no. Robert Sala is a very good head coach. And what he's done for the Jets' defense is evident. We're scoring D to fourth best in a year. The ways in which he pounded the table and defended Zach Wilson is exactly what, what you want your head coach to do. And even bringing in Mike LaFleur was a smart call by Sala. It seemed like the right fit. Those two uh, didn't just work together in San Francisco. Their relationship goes back further. Sala was roommates with Matt LaFleur back in Central Michigan. So their history goes way back, which is great for a working relationship. Uh, since Sala is not an offensive guy, a lot of the offensive development is out of his control. We're seeing Brandon Staley struggle with that with a bonafide quarterback in LA. The biggest problem is drafting guys like Zach Wilson on a limited sample size. Hell, we saw the NFL's darlings and Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch do the same with Trey Lance. LeFleur runs that outside zone, West Coast offensive mix, and he learned under Shanahan. It's the scheme Brock Purdy is thriving in right now, and I'd argue Zach Wilson is a bit more athletically gifted than Purdy, and that scheme is conducive to a QB with mobility. But until you get two guys together, you're just fucking guessing is how they're gonna work, right? I think the LeFleurs are the kind of coaches who are never going to hold anyone's hands. They're young, they have great football minds, but they expect everyone else to. That approach worked uh, with Matt because he had Aaron Rodgers, a battle-tested veteran quarterback. That approach is not always a great recipe for developing a young and raw QB. From what I've learned about the LeFleurs, it's, they lack they lack in the nurturing department, and Zach Wilson is clearly a player that needed a lot of nurturing in his development. He still does. He's also a quarterback that is miles away from being a true leader. Leadership is a, a tough skill to learn, and it stems from being confident in your ability to perform. Ideally, a quarterback po just possesses that leadership, right? We're seeing it with Brock Purdy, who's thriving with the coach, who is a bit of a hard ass. But if your quarterback doesn't have that makeup yet, I think it's on the coaches to help him learn how to lead. Had Zach Wilson played moderately well, this would not be an issue. He's already considered a bust though. He finished with six TDs to seven picks, and I don't care who the OC is, at some point you just need to make some fucking plays to earn your spot, to earn your team's respect. What's kind of crazy to think about, if Mike White stayed healthy, we might be talking about what a decent position Zach Wilson is in, to sit behind Mike White and learn. But now the Jets uh, might be in play for a veteran QB and a new OC, which could make Lafleur look bad, when if, say, a guy like Jimmy G came over, Lafleur would have been receiving tons of praise for saving the offense with a quarterback who already knew his system. While Zach Wilson deserves to shoulder most of the blame, uh, Lafleur was the guy who got fired. 
Why did that happen? Multiple reasons, reportedly. Uh, Robert Sala was having to put out a mini fires in the locker room based on boiling tension from the Jets offense. The Jets offense sucking. If your offense sucks, two guys take the heat, the quarterback and the coach who is in charge of the offense. Which means pinpointing the problem can be a, a bit of a, a gray area. Some guys are gonna blame the coordinator, some guys are gonna blame the, the quarterback. Wide receiver Elijah Moore requested a trade early in the season and apparently told the Fleur to go fuck himself and that he sucks uh, after he received zero targets week six. The Athletic article also stated that those two hugged it out later and I'm pretty sure that's what every receiver says when they don't get any targets. Uh, that's nothing new. The offense apparently rejoiced though when Zach Wilson was benched that's not good. And they were grumbling when he got the job back. Also not good. And also remember wide receiver Denzel Mims wanted out. This sounds like just a Zach Wilson problem, right? Well, a former Jets receiver also said the offense was needlessly complicated. And the impression I got was Lafleur would certainly spend time helping players to learn his offense, but he was not the type of coach who went out of his way to extend the help on his own. And to his credit, when Wilson struggled, they tried to simplify the offense, but I think it was too late. Uh, if you look at what Mike McDaniel has done with the Dolphins offense, his approach with Tua and the level of, dare I say, tenderness from the head coach uh, uh, and play caller and belief in Tua has gotten the absolute best out of Tua. When you look back on this day, you're gonna be like, damn, that was one of the best days of my career too, okay? but I'll earn that from you. You got me? McDaniel was mocked by pretty much everyone uh, on the outside when he arrived in Miami because of his personality. So was Dan Campbell. Turns out though, having a high emotional IQ is pretty helpful for a young man thrust into high pressure situations. My perception on what a head coach should be mm -hmm. was, was always, oh, you know, hard, tough, like you gotta really work hard. Um, in order to find success. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's pretty cool um, that there's other ways uh, you can find success. And it's not always, you know, getting down on somebody. And Dan Campbell and Mike McDaniel are on the polar opposites of personality, but I think their belief in players and willingness to help players is very similar. I'm not sure Lafleur has that. I think Robert Sala does, but he's the defensive guy, so sometimes that doesn't translate to your QB and your offense. But also, Zach Wilson simply did not progress. I'm not sure any coach would have made him good. I do believe LaFleur was the wrong fit to make him better. When Zach Wilson said this... Do you, do you feel like you let the defense down at all? No. no. The internet tore him to shreds. If you're a good QB, your flaws are tolerated. If you're a bad QB, your flaws are put under a microscope and we ain't a bunch of scientists looking through that microscope. We're an angry mob. Be great or fuck off. That's football fans in a nutshell. And now we know Zach Wilson's teammates did not appreciate his words either. Whether they were truly bothered by it or they were bothered by it because everyone and their mother said they should be bothered by it, we'll never really know. But the fact is CJ Uzama had to text Zach Wilson to encourage him to address his teammates directly and not through a press conference a couple days later like Zach was planning to do. What that tells me is CJ Uzama is a great teammate. And I think Zach needs more of those guys in his corner if he ever stands a chance in this league. It's hard though to get guys like that in your corner unless you're playing well and I don't know if that will ever happen for Zach Wilson. Even though he didn't self-destruct like Ryan Leaf, we might be talking about Wilson as the same level of bust years down the road. Or if you want a positive example, look at Trevor Lawrence and what happened uh, for him when they brought in Doug Peterson. And that's not to say that Lafleur is Urban Meyer level bad, but sometimes that fit 
If it's not working, it just takes a change like that to help the trajectory of a guy's career. And the Jets bringing in a vet quarterback to be the starter and for Zach Wilson to sit behind might be the best thing that could happen for him. As for Lafleur, he's gonna be fine. He could land with his brother back in Green Bay. That'll be a good situation. He could be back in San Francisco under Kyle Shanahan, another good situation. Or even Sean McVay is looking for coaching help. They're making a lot, they're making a lot of changes in LA and I think he'll land somewhere that's a much better situation for the complex offense he wants to run, especially if it is a guy like Stafford running it or Brock Purdy in year two who nobody's gonna be able to stop. Don't forget to check out my Brock Purdy video. Thanks for watching, that's good sports. Please come back this weekend. I'll be live streaming the Jags Chiefs game and then Grassi and I will be doing the Bills Bengals game on Sunday.